The John Moore's Liverpool Exhibition is the 17th in a series of biennial exhibitions devoted to contemporary art. Financed jointly by Sir John Moore's and the National Museums and Galleries on Merseyside, the exhibition brings together a wide variety of British painting. This year, over 2,000 artists submitted paintings, and the jury chose 53 pictures for the exhibition. The jury consisted of John Hoyland, the previous first prize winner in 1982, gallery director Jane Purdy, Lewis Biggs, the curator of the Tate Gallery Liverpool, and the artist Maurice Cockrell. Prizes were awarded to 11 artists, 10 equal prizes of £1,000, and one major first prize of £20,000. Andrzej Joukowsky lives in Brighton. Twice before, he's exhibited in the John Moores exhibition. This year's painting, The Beekeeper's Son, has won the £20,000 first prize. First prize is a purchase prize, and the picture now becomes part of the Walker Art Gallery permanent collection. In his basement studio in Brighton, Andrzej Joukowsky talked about his painting. The title actually is from uh, Sylvia Plath. There's a poem called um, The Beekeeper's Daughter. And, um, and I just had a son in the last, last year, and uh, somehow, I don't know, just, just sort of came together like that. Um, that's why the beekeepers. Well, for quite a while I've been doing paintings of hives, or rather inside hives. I've always wanted to paint a picture of, a, of, of the kind of buzz inside a hive. As well, the, the whole idea of, of painting a flying figure has been around for, for years. In fact, I think probably the first drawings were about 20 years ago or so. At some point, various these images come together, and, and, and uh, over the last year, it's, it's become quite strong. I felt a great need to, to put them together and, and, and to paint this picture. Paintings come to me as, as images. I mean, there's a strong sense of, in this particular case, of this, of this flying figure. Um, in other ones, it was a strong sense of a woman sitting on a bench, of a boat, of a man carrying a child. I mean, very kind of basic, simple images. And um, they need to be worked on and, and worked out and, and, and painted and, and, and brought to, to fruition. They're sort of obsessive in that sense. There's something um, has formed and it needs to uh, be seen to be out in the world. I mean, people talk about the mythological element in the paintings, but it's, it's something which is probably... Um, I mean, if there's any myths, it probably goes back to kind of folk tale, you know, sort of rather than, than myths. You know, Polish, I mean, stories and so forth that I was brought up on. Um, nothing particularly comes to mind, no particular stories, but I mean, in the, the atmosphere of them. I mean, with, with, with paintings, I mean, I find, you know, it is, it's always this understrata which is the most important. I mean, I might have some kind of rational ideas about it, but they, 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 they're, they're only really kind of opening doors to, to something which is actually much more deeper and darker and, 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 and older in me, you know. Which, and I like this idea that there is somewhere inside us a kind of primitive uh, room or area which, where these things are really formed, forged, and they kind of get diluted slowly as they kind of come out into the world. And there's, you know, and, and but somebody like me likes to go and actually f go to that area rather than all the other things that have been formed with it, if you see what I mean. When I lose my way, it, it's the kind of certain landmarks which I go back to, which I reorientate myself from childhood, saying, oh, this is how I felt good then. Certain things we're close to as, ch as in childhood and I think we go back to them, and they seem to be like religious feelings. But in fact, there are, there are certain kind of connections with the world which seem to be, um, which are very strong. And they're called religious feelings. But my feeling is that they're actually just very strong connections with the world. And that they have no actually um, other kind of spiritual, spiritual realm to it. There's, I mean, I don't, I'm not interested in any other world as I think as somebody said, you know, I, the other world is this world. I don't believe there is another world. The whole idea of paint being the way, the way paint speaks, I mean, that's something we haven't talked about, but that's, it's not just the images that are very important to me, but actually the way the paint is put on, 
you know, I mean, uh, very thinly, you know, and in some areas of it, it's very thin and transparent. That says something in itself. The way it's sometimes put on, like on the body, the flying figure, I mean, it's, it was purposely painted very thickly and, and put on with a palette knife and so forth because I wanted to get the feeling of kind of earthiness about it, that it was actually something which was heavy, which was up in the air. Uh, while some of the things on the ground are painted in a very kind of flimsy and very one-off stroke kind of way to make it feel like, you know, they, they could disappear. Good things have happened from Louvre. I mean, my big, big uh, first show was at the Blue Coat. The university brought that first painting from when I was still a student, um, from the first John Moore. I've, I've visited Liverpool a lot and, and always go to the Walker Gallery and um, I like the idea of, of it ending up somewhere where not only I can go and visit it, but it's actually on show all the time. <laughs>